Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also on Instagram, and this is episode 23. I missed a week last week, but I'm excited to be back this week with um, a couple small updates. I have a large pile of yarn over here to show you, and I think I just want to touch base again on my fall and winter knitting plans. We are wrapping up fall. Um, today is actually Thursday, December 22nd, so we are officially into winter now. Um, so I wanted to share with you my progress on those plans that I had made and remind you of what's coming up in the winter. Um, I am planning on doing a full like 2023 knitting plans and goals video. Um, so the winter knitting plans kind of fits nicely into that. But we'll do a little talking about winter first in this video and then that video will come next in a couple weeks I think um, but we can start off with what I'm wearing um, I'm not wearing any knitting today but I'm wearing my Explore Knits and Fibers sweatshirt that I picked up from her um, winter market sale I did not go to the winter market but I ordered online and I also picked up some yarn from that sale so I will show you that in a little bit um, I don't have any finished objects here physically to show you, um, but I did finish the final neon yellow Oslo hat, so I'll put a photo here. Um, this one is a gift, as well as the other, well, three of the others that I, well, let's see, I've made four total. One is for me. This one is for me, I'm keeping this one. The other three that I've made are gifts, and I spent Sunday, I think it was Sunday, wrapping most of the gifts um, for Christmas this year, and so all of the gift knits have been wrapped, so I don't physically have them here. Um, I was planning on doing like an Oslo hat, like to full review video. Um, I wasn't feeling well last week so it just never came to fruition. I did do an Instagram post where I talked about all my feelings on the Oslo hat. Um, I guess we can talk about them now. <laughs> um, overall I love the Oslo hat pattern. Um, I think it knits up really quickly because it's two strands of fingering weight held double so it's basically like a DK slash worsted weight so it knits up really fast um, I love the like large folded brim I think that's like that was the huge selling point for me was how large this was um, I thought it was different than a lot of other hats that had smaller brims and I just think it looks really nice um, yeah, and just the overall fit and feel of it I think is great. What I maybe don't like as much about it, um, and what I have been trying to fix ever since making the first hat is that it really does take two skeins of fingering weight to make this hat. Um, I tried to use one skein and I was successful in using one skein on the speckled hat that I made. I did make that a size 3, like I followed the measurements for the size 3. Um, but in order to use only one skein, I made the brim shorter and I made the like this part, the body of the hat, a little bit shorter as well. And it really took away for me, the integrity of the Oslo hat. Like, the main selling point is the thick brim, and so when you shorten that, it's different. It's not the same. Um, like, technically, it's still an Oslo hat, but like, the reason I picked this was because I liked the brim to be wide, and when it's shorter, it's not the same. So, that's kind of where I'm at um, with my feelings on the Oslo hat. And yes, I'm still going to keep knitting these. Um, I did have to take a break because I knit so many <laughs> so quickly. Um, but I do have more yarn to make more Oslo hats. I want to make one for my husband Joel. I want to make one for my brother eventually. Um, I was thinking of making him one for Christmas, but it just, I needed a break after the three uh, slash four technically. 
so that'll be a different <laughs> gift for another time um, but I really like the neon yellow one I think um, it's gonna be a hit I think the person that I made it for is going to like it and it was really cute um, I don't know if the neon yellow is something that I would wear for myself um, I have been toying around with the idea of making I don't know where it went. Where did my hot pink yarn go? Oh, here it is. Of making a hot pink one for myself. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's where we're at with the Oslo hats. Um, maybe I can get through another episode in the future without mentioning this pattern. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So the other... The only other project that I really have to show you um, is my sweater. And I've been keeping it, as you may know, in my Black Pearl Magic bag. And I've actually been stuffing this with like so many things. Um, something else that I'd like to show you. This is the Mud... Mud Living? Mud? Stockholm needle case. And I actually got this as a gift last year for Christmas. Um, it was on my list. My mom bought it for me. And it had been sitting in my like yarn stash over here all year. And I finally decided, you know what, I do want to transfer my needles into this. Um, I was really hesitating like earlier this year because in the chow gu needle case it like says directly on the fabric like what size the needle the needles are the needle tips um and for some reason I just like couldn't give that up I was like I like this but it doesn't say what size the needles are and I finally was just like I don't think I care <laughs> I don't think I care anymore um, and I like this I, I think it's really nice looking and I'm just giving it a shot using it so I'll just show you I transferred all of my like smaller needles in here that I use more often um, cuz like where I'm really sitting right now is like the 4.5 5.5 down to the you know 3.5 millimeters 3.25 I think the largest ones I stuck in here are my six and a half millimeter needles um, the other ones I did have in here for a bit but they were like rattling around and falling out so I just put them back in the chow goo case but um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I put my little T-pin here so it's got easy access. All my cords are up here. Um, so, so far, it's working out pretty well. Anyways, I was using this yesterday and so I just shoved it in my Black Pearl Magic bag. Um, and it matches really nicely the little case that I bought for these scissors. Although, I did not buy the scissors with the case so the case doesn't close but it doesn't really matter. Allows for easier access to the scissors. Anyways, my sweater. This is the Dear Duomo by Sanghee Knits, and I'm knitting this up in Explorer Knits and Fibers Cashmere Cavern Sock, which is the 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon Base in the colorway Fia from the Ireland collection. So it's got like, well, it's got dog hair all over it, but it's a white base with like light pink, purple, um, some like tealy green blue, and it's working up really, really beautifully. I finished the body of this. I think last time you saw it, I was able to like drape it over my shoulder. Um, it's been almost two weeks since the last time I podcasted, so that's why there is so much progress here. Dun, 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 dun. And I tried it on and it fits, so there we go. It was a bottom up construction. So we started with this ribbing at the bottom and then knit all the way up. You can see here's the sleeve. So at this point you split for the sleeves and you knit the back panel first and then you knit the front panel 
And the pattern actually gives two different options for how to knit, like, you know, you're here and then you need to, like, do the side panel and then this side panel to go around the collar. Um, so it gives you two options on how to do that. I chose the one that included short row shaping and a three needle bind off here at the top uh, seam. The other option was not short rows, I think it was just regular increases, but then you bind off and you have to like mattress stitch seam this together. And I just didn't really want to do that. I thought the three needle bind off would be easier, which I don't know if I've ever done the three needle bind off before. I feel like I have, but it was incredibly easy. If you don't know what a three needle bind off is, you basically have the front and the back on two separate needles. They're on their own needles. And you have a third needle and then you're literally just like knitting two together, the front and the back. You do a knit. And then, well, you do two knits, and then you just do like a regular bind off, and you pass one stitch over. It's incredibly easy. Um, the only issue that I am seeing now, and this was this was mentioned in the pattern, I think. I was gonna go back and look this up, um, and I forgot. And I think I can fix this afterwards. But I don't. Can you see? here in the neckline how there's holes there's like a little hole every other stitch from where when you do the bind off like one of those bind off stitches is just like really big and I thought maybe it won't be noticeable after blocking but like on camera I feel like this is really noticeable so when I'm done with the collar I'm gonna go I'm gonna see if I can seam those up um, you can kind of see on the inside also, they're just like kind of big holes. So I'm going to see if I can get some, <laughs> some, thread some yarn through there and see if that gets a little bit better. And if not, then it'll just be a design element, I guess. Um, but I am onto the collar now. I decided to pick this up first before the sleeves. Um, because I wanted it to like look a little bit finished and really see once I start the sleeves like really see how much the sleeves like pull this part down um, I don't know I just wanted to do the collar first <laughs> um, but I'm almost done with the collar let's see yeah I've got like one and a half more rows and then I'm gonna see how long this is um, it's supposed to be like an inch and a quarter. There is an option to do a folded over neckband or just a one instead of folded over, just a straight, regular, and then bind off. Um, and I am not doing the folded, so I'm just going to go straight and then bind off. I feel like that's what I did on the clove sweater. The clove sweater is not folded over, um, and I really like it. It seems like simple, it's not too heavy. Um, the Oslo sweater does have a folded over neckband, and I do like that as well, but I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like I don't necessarily need the extra, like, weight and warmth of the folded over neckband, um, in the climate that I'm in here in Southern California, so... That's where we are. I think it's looking great. Um, I am not alternating skeins and let's see, I really haven't looked at this like yet by itself. Um, I mean, I can kind of tell because I know where the new skein started, but I really don't think it's noticeable. I don't know, you tell me, can you see? Can you see where the new skein started? I don't know. It might just be like maybe you can see a difference because it's where I switched from knitting in the round to knitting flat. And sometimes there's a difference in tension there, but I don't think it's very noticeable. So that's where we're at. Um, I have been keeping like track of what my like knitting goals are for each week 
Um, and I have been working ahead. I have been working on this very, very quickly. So for, let's see, last week, which was December 12th through the 18th, I really just wanted to finish the body in the round and I finished that very quickly. And then I added on, okay, I'll do half of the back panel. And then I finished that. And then I was like, okay, let's just do the full back panel. So we did that. And then my original note for this current week, December 19th through the 25th, was finish the body. Well, obviously we're already finished the body and we're not fully, well, we're at like halfway through the week. Um, so now I added on finish the body and the collar and start sleeve one. Um, I know if I'm just like sitting watching a movie that I can do a sleeve pretty quickly, um, especially if I'm using circular, hold on, Brecky, no. Anyways, I know I can finish a sleeve pretty quickly, um, especially if I have it on circular needles and I'm using my row counter here to track you know, how many tens of rows I need to do. As long as I'm tracking it and I'm seeing that I'm making progress on here, I am motivated to continue going. Um, it's really when I don't have a row counter on and I feel like I'm knitting forever and I'm not seeing the progress on the sleeve. I feel like I'm not seeing the sleeve grow. That's when I get discouraged and like put it down and forget about it. So. I'm honestly gonna try and have this finished by the end of the week. Um, my like stretch goal was to get this finished so I could wear it on Christmas. However, and I feel like I shouldn't even say this because like there are so many places that are expecting winter storms over the next couple of days. Um, but San Diego and Los Angeles are not one of those places um, and it's supposed to be 77 degrees on Christmas <laughs> Fahrenheit <laughs> so I'm probably not going to be wearing a sweater when I go to my brother's house so yeah I don't think I'm going to need to have it finished by Christmas, is basically what I'm saying. So, oh man, it's going to be 77, yeah, Ooh, here in Temecula as well, although we're not going to be here on Christmas, we're going up to LA, so, anyways, that's where I am, but if I get it done before Christmas, then I can start on the next one, which is always fun. Which just means I should probably have some yarn caked up and ready to take with me. But we'll see. We'll see how far this gets. So, that... <laughs> I just picked this up. I was like, did my... It was like sitting on top of my yarn ball like this. And I was like, did I really just like mess up my yarn ball? But it's just all the ends. I weaved in all the ends yesterday after I finished the body and did not throw them away yet. So... Anyway, that's my Oslo sweater progress. Um, so my plans for like the podcast for the next couple of weeks. And I... Next week is actually kind of busy. I have my best friend, Sarah, is coming to visit me next week. Um, she lives in Montana, but her family lives out in LA. So um, her being in LA for Christmas I mean, she's normally in LA for Christmas, but her having the time to come visit me for a couple of days is very rare. So, um, I'm just like really excited about that and we're going to be doing a lot of things that I have to plan. Um, and so I don't, I need to figure out a time to squeeze in an episode next week because next week I would like to film my everything that I knit in 2022 video. Um, and then the week after that, which would be the first week in January, I would love to do my 2023 knitting plans video. So, um, at some point, you know what, this is my 
thought. This, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this done before the end of the year. So it will be included in my everything that I knit in 2022 video, as well as a little bit later in January, um, probably the third week in January, I will be able to sit down and put all my thoughts together and do my drop shoulder comparison video. So I'll have more to say about this pattern at that point as well. So it's not gonna be an issue that I won't have like a full episode dedicated to it because it'll pop up in a couple more episodes and definitely in the drop shoulder comparison video. So yay, I'm excited. I'm really excited that this is like the last big project for 2022 for this year. It'll be wrapped up really nicely. Um, one other thing that I have been thinking of is I have a couple projects that I started this year that I didn't finish. Um, and so at, at some point, probably in my Everything I Knit in 2022 video, I will bring those out and show them. Um, and I'm trying to decide when I want to finish those. One of them I think is not very much work um, and so I really should just do it. The other one I'm not interested in finishing right now so it's not really an issue. It's really just the one. <laughs> um, it's really just the one. So anyways okay we're getting off topic here. I have a lot of yarn to show you and that includes my Explore and Knit Advent, um, the notions that I have to show you, my Twice Sheared Sheep Advent, which I took everything out of the boxes. I have fully opened my Twice Sheared Sheep Advent. Why don't we start with that? Why don't we just start with that? Because I want to tell you about it. I can't, uh, I can. There's a couple things that have not come out yet, so I can't show them to you. This tomorrow, that's the next day. Because today's the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, yeah. So there's three things that I cannot show you, but I took everything out of the boxes. And so now <laughs> this is just a sad empty box. Um, because I filmed I filmed everything. If you don't know, I have been posting a reel every single day, opening each of the boxes, um, and it's been really fun and exciting, and I think people are liking them. I don't really know. I don't get a ton of feedback on them, but it's easier for me to batch that filming, so every Saturday and Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, I would like sit down and film like seven videos of me opening seven of the boxes, and so that I had the content on my phone that I could just post every single day. Um, and so last weekend, I opened the rest of the boxes, and it was a lot. There. <laughs> There were just white boxes everywhere, all, all over the bed, and so I trashed them. I just needed to declutter, get everything out of the way. Um, I have really, really enjoyed having this box here for the last couple of months, opening it every so often, and seeing the layout of all of the like little white boxes inside. I think it was beautifully done. And at this point though, now we're almost to the end and it was time to say goodbye to all of the little white boxes. So that's where we are. Um, and I actually need to go into my photos so that I can remember <laughs> what everything is. So the last video that I posted, I believe was on December 10th. So we saw up through the 10th day of Advent. So, let me get most everything. This was one of the days. I'll just show you. This was one of the days recently. Um, so I have most everything in one of my little tins. Um, move those out of the way so I don't get tempted to show you. And a couple things, larger things that ended up in here. Let's see get a little bit organized here and just pull everything out. Okay, 
So day 11. And I do think I've talked about these before on the podcast. But day 11 were these wooden cable needles. Oh, oh boy. There we go. I actually already had a set of these that I used for my sweater number 15. My all over cabled sweater that I still need to fix, if you remember that. Um, but they come in a pack of three and they're three different sizes. So they're good for, you know, different weights of projects. And so that was really fun. That was day 11. Let's see, day 12. I don't have it with me, but day 12 was actually a free pattern for this. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Oh, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Um, day 12 was a free pattern for this fox crochet keychain. And it's super cute. So that was day 12. Day 13 was the giant box, if you remember. And what was inside was this really cute mug with a sleeping bear on it. The theme for this box was woodland forest, so all of the little animals and creatures and artwork are woodland forest themed, so that's why it's a cute sleeping brown bear. Day 14 was this beautiful fox pin. And I think this would be really lovely as like a shawl pin or something like that. Let's see what the back looks like. It's definitely like an exclusive to the box. Um, day 15 were, I gotta find them. Not in there. There we go. Day 15 were the knit increase and decrease markers. So they come as a set of two. One is an increase and one is a decrease. Um, and they're these cute little bees on them. I'm losing the light now. I hate when that happens. Um, but these are really, really useful for so many different things. Um, what I have been, what I have used them for in the past is I was doing, when I did my toe up socks, I used the increase on the toe because one round was a knit round and one round was an increase round. Um, I used these most recently, what was I working on? I had something to do with my Dear Duomo sweater. Um, I think it was like up towards the top, it was like one round of increase, one round of knit. Oh, no, you know what it was? It was the Oslo hat. When you do the decreases for the crown of the head, um, you start out with one round knit, one round decrease. So that's what I was using this for. I used this like a lot because I did two hats right in a row. Um, so these I love. They're super useful. Um, day 16. Day 16 were these gorgeous scissors. Do you see the butterflies on there? I think they're so pretty. This is actually, and they're really sharp, which you want from scissors. Um, these are actually my favorite thing in the whole box, besides the really soft yarn from day one. But I think these scissors are beautiful, um, and I'm really happy to have a second pair of scissors. Day 17 were these lobster class clip style markers um, for the right side and the wrong side of your work. Um, these are useful sometimes if you're knitting flat, maybe like a flat garter stitch, scarf, shawl, blanket, something like that, um, and you need to tell yourself, remind yourself which is the right side and which is the wrong side. Um, so that was really fun. Okay, day 18, let me find it, oh boy. <laughs> Okay, so the the next up, there were just like a lot of stitch markers, and I have like taken them off of their little holder, so I'm just going to try to 
show oh no see they're gonna slip and fall out um day 18 were a bunch of these ring slip marker or stitch markers sorry um and so they're really cute these are available in the shop something similar day 19 oh day 19 was so cute Okay, day 19 was this row counter. It's a shorty row counter, so it's only five numbers, five rings instead of ten, with a little blue owl. He's so cute. I love the like bright blue. That was one of my favorites as well. Okay, day 20... 19, 20. I opened these a little bit out of order. But day 20 was this tin. So this is the large... Hello, light. Thank you. Okay. This is the large Notion tin. I'll compare it for you. This is the small Notion tin. So you can see how much bigger it is. They also open a little bit differently in case you wanted to know. The small one opens this way on a little hinge. The large one opens, you push the top down and it completely comes off. So that was day 20. Day 21 was yesterday. Were these... And these are cable locks. So you can slide this onto, let me show you. You can slide this onto your needles. And put it, it'll, it'll go all the way onto the cable. And it locks, locks your work in place. So that your stitches don't fall off. You can also use these if you um, like don't have stretchy cords or something, and you're using a like cord, actual cord, to like put stitches on hold. Um, so you take the needles off, and it's just sitting on hold. You can use these like at the end as a stopper, so that your stitches again don't fall off. Um, so those are pretty useful. That was yesterday, and then today were so day 22 were these duo um like fix it tools and so they've got a crochet hook on one side and like a knitting needle point on the other side and it's this set of three so they're three different sizes um and these are just really nice to have in your like notions tin your notion toolbox if you need to pick up stitches if you need an extra little needle tip for something if you need to do a crochet cast on bind off anything um, and you don't have like a regular crochet hook laying around um, these are a little bit smaller and just pretty useful so um, almost everything that I have mentioned is available in the shop um, at the affiliate link in down in the description below um, a couple things like the mug not available the pin not available but all of the other tools while the artwork or color choice that was in this box may not be available like the items are so for example like this really cute owl in a teacup the artwork for this is not available, but there are like 20 other different artworks for large tins available in the shop. And the other piece that I want to mention is if you feel like you really missed out on um, this advent box this year, um, I wanted to remind you that Twice Year Cheap announced a like membership for 2023 where they will have four quarterly boxes next year so I believe it's March June September and then the big advent box but if you purchase a membership you get each of these boxes if you purchase before January 1st 
then there is a nice little discount for you um, for this membership and the like monthly buck monthly boxes next year will kind of be a smaller version of this I believe it, they said they'll have eight full-size products in there as well as a couple extra surprise goodies um, potentially yarn mugs other stuff like that um, and it's so and so if it's something that you're interested in again I will have the link in the description down below you can go check it out and if you purchase from my link I will be eternally grateful for you because it puts a little bit of money back in my pocket uh, to bring you the podcast so that is everything from Twice Sheared Sheep. Okay, let me put this away really quick. And we will move on to the yarn. The next one that I have been sharing um, each week on the podcast is the Explorer Knits Winter Solstice Countdown. And seeing as yesterday was December 21st, yesterday was the Winter Solstice, I can now share all of it with you. Um, and I missed last week, so you get two new yarns. What I had already shared with you was, this was week one, this beautiful green. This was week two, this nice orangey, rusty red. Um, so, the boxes for these are gone as well. <laughs> I just got rid of all of the boxes, okay? This was week three. Um, and I got the tonal. So she did a tonal and a variegated box. They were two separate boxes. Um, I got the tonals. And this is a lovely purpley, pink, burgundy colorway. And it's called Sonder. I think this goes really nicely with these three. It's not so pretty. Yeah. And then yesterday's if you have not opened week four yet, I'm opening it and showing it to you right now, okay? But this is week four. It's this gorgeous charcoal gray, dark gray. It's got a hint of like blue undertone and it's called Avenoir, Avenor, Avenor. Should have looked up how to say that. Um, let me show you all of them together. Light, come back. I think it's a really gorgeous palette. Um, and I'm really happy with it. I think it's really beautiful. So, these are the four yarns. Let's see. In the box was also the candle from Wax and Wool. And it's just named Solstice 2022. I'm... It smells so good. I'm not even going to try to describe it for you because I'm really bad at describing scents, as we know, but it smells so good. And then the other piece that was in the box was the stitch marker from Hello Lavender. And she posted these on Instagram today as well, so I feel okay sharing it with you now. But look how gorgeous that is. It's like a mountain with a stormy cloudy sky in the background she said she hand painted the moon on all of them all of them so they're just gorgeous gorgeous stitch marker so that's it that was the explore knits um tonal advent and i'm really happy with it so yay once done i can put this yarn away now um, and I'm also going to show you the Woolberry Fiber Co. Um, box, winter box. I think it was a winter solstice box as well. I'm not sure. This was not a countdown though, so I've been saving it. And if you have not opened it yet, please don't watch. Like if you're saving it for Christmas. <laughs> Don't watch, um, but this is the Woolberry Fiber Co. box, and I'm gonna kind of do these in order, what I think the order should be. Um, so the first one is this gorgeous, gorgeous burgundy red, and the colorway is called Festive. 
Um, I got all of mine on Berry Cashmere, so it's an 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon, and it's really twisty. So this was number one. Next is Juniper, which is this lovely green. Kind of matches the green that I'm wearing today. So that's really nice. Okay, number three, I love this one. It's blue. And this is called Starry Night. And it's it's so tonal. You can definitely see the like, there are bright parts and there are darker parts all in this one yarn skein. And it's gorgeous. So that's number three. And then number four, to tie it all together, is called Softly Falling. And it's this nice white gray. And it's gorgeous. I love these three together. I think they're so pretty. So this was the Woolberry Fiber Co. box. Winter box. Um, it also came with a like project bag that I can't quite reach right now. So you just have to trust me that that was really nice as well. Okay. I have a couple more yarns to show you, so bear with me. Um, when I ordered this sweatshirt from Explore Knits, I also finally got my hands on something that I have been wanting for so, so long. And this is Moonstone. If you are familiar with Explorer Knits, I feel like Moonstone is a very well-known colorway that has been, a been around for a while, um, but it really only comes back now in like limited runs. And somehow, there were skeins left over from the winter market, and I really decided that I wanted it on Surrey, which is what this base is. And I think there were like nine or ten skeins of this left over on Surrey and I was able to get six of them. Like how did I even manage this? I don't know but it's so beautiful. It's so much more beautiful in person than like I thought it would be but it's this white base with light pink, light blue and where it mixes it, it almost looks purple and if you've ever held their Surrey base, it's extremely, extremely soft. It's 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. So, now I have six skeins of this to make a cumulus blouse. And if you're thinking to yourself that you have heard me talk about the cumulus blouse before, it's because I have. I do have another sweater quantity of yarn already in my stash for a cumulus blouse. I'll just grab it because why not? But this is the other sweater quantity that I have. These are all from Sorella Yarn and it's act there are two different colors. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Um, this one was from the Mayflower collection. This is called You Are Good for the Soul. And this one was actually a fall, yeah, fall tonal. Um, originally the color was Studio. I think she renamed it to either Cottage or Charlotte or something like that. I don't know why. Um, studio makes way more sense. This is like a very ballet color, <laughs> like a ballet studio. But anyways, I digress. Um, the one thing that I need to look at, look into a little bit more, is... This is Surrey Sock. So this is a fingering weight yarn, one skein. And this is Surrey Lace. So this is a lace weight yarn. And I'm pretty sure you want two lace weights held together. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. So I need to look into this. But I have had this sweater on my mind for a long time. So I know it's not technically in my winter knitting plans, but I feel like I'm going to just need to cast this on in one of these two colorways very, very soon because I just can't get it out of my mind. So that's where we're at with that. But isn't it gorgeous? I love it. I love it so much. 
Um, okay, and then one last thing that I ordered and that came in the mail. And I, I don't know what my, what my plans are for this, but I had to have it. I just had to have it. This is from Ocean Fibers, and it's two skeins of her Surrey Alpaca base in the colorway Surf and Rainbows. And this was all she had left. I would have gotten more if there were more available, <laughs> but she only had two skeins. But it's Rainbow Surrey Alpaca, and this is like the most gorgeous rainbow ever. So, I don't know what it's gonna be. They're 328 yards, so I have about 660 yards to play with. Who knows, maybe a rainbow hat? Maybe some sort of accessory? I just love them so much. They're so pretty, so. Okay. <coughs> That's all the yarn I have to show you. I, I got a couple stickers too that I wanted to share. Um, this one came with Ocean Fibers. It's her little ocean holographic sticker, which is gorgeous. And I got this, um, just one more row. This is from Dawn Catherine um, on Instagram. I'll put her her username so you can see and this was really why I got these two together at the same time but how perfect is this it's a California with a skein and knitting needles and a crochet hook and the California poppies it's like so knit California just so knit California I love it so much um, so I think I'm gonna put these this is my ice cream social sticker from Explore Knits from the summer. But I think I'm gonna put these in my um, new journal somewhere that I've been keeping up with, my bullet journal um, that I've been having fun with. So I wanted to share those with you as well. Okay, this has been a longer episode than I really thought it would be. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to go over just the winter knitting plans again, um, just to let you know that like, yes, I still am planning to make these three raglan sweaters, so we are going to be leaving the world of drop shoulders and entering the world of raglan sweaters. I am honestly kind of sad about it. I have so loved wearing my drop shoulder. I feel like it's a shape that I really enjoy wearing um, and I'm really comfortable in. So I'm interested to see how I feel about these raglans coming up. I do have a couple of raglan sweaters already. Um, I have made the Cozy Classic raglan before. However, it's too small. So I'm gonna be making it again in a different size, probably with a different gauge now that I'm like more advanced in my knitting than I was last year. When did I make that? I think it was last year. Um, and yeah, the two others as well. So we'll see. I, I mean, it's really, it's a, this whole thing has been an experiment for me, right? Just to see like what I like making, what I like wearing, what I find enjoyable. So that's what this is all about. But here is, I'm not going to pull out, I'm not going to pull out the full sweater quantities because I have like 8, 12, 20, I have like 22 skeins of yarn already laying on my floor that I have to put away, so I'm not going to add like 15 more to that. What's this? Okay. So these are the, the three other yarns that I'm going to be using for three new sweaters. Um, let's see if I can remember. This is going to be the Cozy Classic Raglan, and this is Explore Knits Rocky's DK in Court of Dreams. I'm really excited to get this one on my needles. And this one is going to be the Cozy Classic Raglan. I think I am going to hold mohair with this one. Um, I don't know if you remember from earlier this year, I did a swatch and I held like a blue mohair with this and a purple mohair with this to see which one I liked better. Um, there was a huge debate on my Instagram about it and I, I really liked the blue held with it 
and I think I am gonna hold the blue mohair with this um, we can talk more about why later but I feel like it's gonna give me closer to the gauge of the sweater so it will be DK plus mohair um, and I just think it's gonna help me out I need to go back to my swatch and like actually count the gauge and see what it is um, but that's my thought for that this one is going to be the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit, um, and this is Bella Filato Studios in the colorway Pure Headlights in Bella DK, so it's a merino nylon DK, and I have had this in my stash for so long. Um, it's actually very similar to the Fia colorway that I'm making my Dear Duomo with right now, um, but I think it's going to be beautiful. I'll knit up so I'm excited to get this out of my stash and into a sweater and then lastly I am going to be making the Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl in this gorgeous speckled and variegated yarn from Long Dog Yarn. This is the colorway Rose Gold in Merino DK. It's 100% superwash merino wool. So the interesting thing, um, all of my drop, sweat, drop shoulder sweaters had like slightly different yarn compositions. I made one with fingering plus mohair, one with straight DK, and one with fingering held double. Whereas all of my raglans are just going to be DK, except for this one which might be DK plus mohair. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, we will talk more about the drop shoulders and their yarn composition and which one I liked more in the comparison video, but I do actually like wearing the one that is straight DK, so it makes me feel better about <laughs> this choice that I made before I really thought about and realized that I liked it. Makes me feel better about it now, so. emails um but yeah so stay tuned I originally was thinking of using this one and making this one first but I'm kind of changing my mind and I think I want to make this one first I really think I want to use my court of dreams so we'll see stay tuned I'll have to figure that out soon because I'm almost done with this sweater the Dear Duomo. So that's where we're at. That is where we are at. Okay, I think I've been talking for way too long. So that's all of the knitting stuff. I want to wish you guys all a happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I am planning on having one more video before the new year. So we'll see if it happens. Hopefully it does. Um, and that's it. I hope you have a great rest of your day and get some knitting time in. And I'll see you later. Bye!